You're watching the nation's best college newscast. 11 News at Noon starts now. Algae alert. If you're out on Utah Lake and see blue, medical officials say to stay away. Homegrown gowns. Two moms claim victory at the Mapleton City Council meeting as they get their dress shop on its feet. And Ebola emergency. The Dallas man infected with the virus is dead. And President Obama is calling the outbreak a top national security priority. I'm Eric Mock. And I'm Brooke Martin. Welcome to 11 News at Noon. A poisonous pond scum is spreading at Utah Lake. It's already killed one dog. Yeah, and health officials are worried it could kill again. Utah Lake is greener than ever, and it's not a good thing. An algae bloom has the Utah County Department of Health worried. And as 11 News reporter Aubrey Stuckey shows us, boaters and their families may be at risk. I saw the green algae on the shore, and it is thick. There is so much pond scum that health officials are calling it toxic. If you have recently been to Utah Lake and have symptoms that go beyond having the cold or flu, health officials say you should see your doctor immediately. Brooke? Police say two bountiful girls who claimed two men kidnapped and beat them last month confess they made the whole story up. Detectives found video that showed the teenagers in a convenience store during the time of their supposed abduction. Police say the girls had a sleepover on September 9th and snuck out to call 911 and fake a distressed emergency call. Sean Kelly's attorney says a best guess shouldn't send the former West Valley police officer to jail. Day two of the pre preliminary manslaughter hearing meant heavy questioning for a Salt Lake police homicide detective who's, who is the key witness against Cowley. The defense picked his testimony apart, questioning his qualifications to review the 2012 shooting of Danielle Willard. Cowley could spend 15 years in prison. Provo police say the family emergency scam claimed another victim. A Utah County woman lost $7,000 Monday. The scammers convinced her on the phone that her granddaughter was in jail and needed money. Police say the scammers target senior citizens and convince them to, to buy and send cash cards. Authorities say it is unlikely she'll see that money again. Congressman Jason Chaffetz faced off with candidate Brian Wanaka in a quiet debate for the 3rd Congressional District seat. Candidates covered topics ranging from the Ebola scare to gun control, agreeing on most, but there were a few topics that heated up the debate. Is our air and is our quality of life affected by what we throw into the air and in the water? Yes, of course. But the Al Gore defined uh, global warming is a farce. It is. We cannot solve the energy crisis simply by expanding exploration and drilling. We must support research for renewables and alternatives to oil. And we must establish incentives to encourage everyone to be more efficient. Chaffetz also defended the recent lawsuit against President Obama, saying it was the only option. Wanaka claimed it was a waste of time and resources. Two Mapleton women started a business out of their own home, but the planning commission had concerns about parking. 11 News reporter Emily Swenson talks to the owners of the store about their appeal to the city council. Neighbors were concerned about increasing traffic, but so far police haven't issued any traffic or parking citations since the boutique opened. Rock stars and general authorities met in a collision of culture last night at the Meet the Mormons premiere. This is the trailer for the feature-length documentary The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints put together. Elder Jeffrey R. Holland and Elder David A. Bednar watched the film with Neon Trees drummer Elaine Bradley, Marie Osmond, and other famous Latter-day Saints. Sounds like the place to be. I guess so. <laughs> All the famous Mormons in one place. When 11 News at Noon continues, Making it legal, one day after the overturning of Utah's same-sex marriage ban, neighboring states are getting similar news. And Habitat for Humanity, how one Lehigh family is turning their life around with a little bit of help. Stay with us. The Supreme Court temporarily blocked gay marriages in Nevada and Idaho just a day after a lower court legalized them. The Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals ruled marriage bans in both states violate equal protection rights and made gay marriage legal there. But the Supreme Court granted a last-minute appeal by Idaho to put a stay on gay marriages so the state can have time to prepare an appeal. The first man diagnosed with Ebola in the U.S. has died. Officials say that Thomas Eric Duncan succumbed to the virus earlier today in this Texas hospital. The Liberian man was traveling to the United States to visit family, but didn't show any symptoms at an airport screening. He got sick a few days later in Dallas, and officials say he was in contact with at least 38 people. President Obama is calling the Ebola outbreak a top national security priority. The U.S. has sent 4,000 troops to Africa to fight the disease. 
Low income, low income families are getting help from a group whose goal is for every person to have a decent place to live. 11 News reporter Jeremy Harris met a family that is working on their new house with the help of neighbors. If you click on Jeremy's story on 11news.byu.edu, he has put the eligibility requirements and a link for you to contact Habitat for Humanity if you think you qualify. Utah has made it onto another national list, this time for being the most generous state. An IRS analysis done by the Chronicles of Philanthropy found that Utahns gave, gave the most money to charity, donating more than $60 for every $1,000 they earned. Officials say the large percentage of Mormons and the 10% tithing they pay are a big reason why. Students will have to save a few more pennies because tuition at BYU is going up next semester. Undergrad students will have to pay $75 more and school officials say the cost covers salaries, supplies and other operations. Lawmakers say tuition at Utah public colleges and universities also have the potential to increase by about 2.5%. Well, it probably means I'm going to have to eat out less this upcoming semester. But Now, Shaylee, do you have any good news in the weather today? Yeah, I'm not looking forward to that news either, but the weather's looking great and it's going to for the next couple of days. Find out just how long we're going to have this great weather when we come back after the break. Let me just say, we are getting the best of both worlds right now with this Indian summer. We've got warm temperatures, but we're also enjoying the wonderful, beautiful trees up on the mountain and all around us. Red, gold, orange, all around us. Right now, we're at a current temperature of 63 degrees and 67% humidity, a little bit higher from some of the st storms that are coming from the south. But we don't have to worry about rain. Today, uh, we've got calm winds. And as you can see on the SAP map, we've got low activity up north, a little bit of activity in southern Utah coming from Arizona. That's just the remnants of Tropical Storm Simon. That is no longer a storm. But there is still some showers coming that might hit southern Utah today and tomorrow. Looking into the rest of the state, we're pretty much 70s throughout the whole state. Logan will be at 76, Salt Lake at 77, Provo at 76, and St. George at 81. The whole state's looking pretty well, except for southern Utah is expecting some rain and maybe some thunderstorms today. Going into tonight, we've got a low of 48. That's not too bad. Mostly cloudy and just a light wind coming from the northwest. Making for a beautiful October evening, just another one to add to the list. Then looking at the rest of the state, we're staying mostly in the 40s and 50s, but Logan will touch 38 tonight. Uh, and we're looking at 52 in Salt Lake City, 48 in Provo, uh, 54 in Moab, and 58 in St. George. Maybe some rain still in St. George, but the rest of the state will be mostly cloudy. Looking at St. George for five-day forecast, we're looking at rain today and tomorrow. But as we go into the weekend, by Friday, things will start clearing up. Lots of sun and the temperatures will also be going up. Looking at northern Utah, it's a different story in our benefit. Provo, Utah is going to be at 76 and 75. Today and tomorrow it will be at 75. Um, Friday it will be at 72 and Saturday 71. We might be expecting rain on Sunday. Hopefully that rain waits until Sunday though and so we have the weekend to enjoy Friday and Saturday's good weather. Great. That's what I like to hear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have good weather this week and that's good for the baseball team. Yeah well it's always a good week for baseball and when the weather's good in October it's especially be good because we've been waiting all week or all year excuse me for this week now that the playoffs have arrived. Two teams looking to punch their tickets to the NLCS. Would they be able to? And we have some BYU football, too. I've always wanted to be a starting quarterback here. And it's a dream come true. And now. Dreams coming true. Christian Stewart grew up cheering for BYU. Now he's their offensive leader. What should we expect from the new Cougar QB? Welcome back. We are 30 hours away from a new era in BYU football. The Cougars looking to Christian Stewart to fill the shoes of an injured Heisman Trophy candidate. 
Christian Stewart walked on as a freshman in 2008, but then left BYU to go play football at Snow College. A scholarship offer brought him back to Provo, where he has been preparing for this moment that's finally arrived. Stewart says that even though he has different strengths than Taysom Hill, the team's offensive strategy will stay the same for the rest of the season. Minnesota Vikings running back Adrian Peterson made his first court appearance this morning to fight child abuse charges. He was planning to enter a not guilty plea but didn't have an opportunity to do so. He says he will not accept a plea deal and plans to go to trial which may begin in early December. Peterson hasn't played since week one this season and can't participate in team activities until the case is over, but he's still earning his $11.75 million salary. Divide that by 16 weeks, he's bringing in nearly three quarters of a million dollars every Sunday, even though he's not on the field. We talked about baseball, talked about football. NBA preseason started for some teams last night. This Detroit Pistons usher happy about it, bringing, <laughs> bringing Carlton back. Oh, I guess. Are, you, are you sure he's an usher? <laughs> I think he's a dancer. He, he, might, be, he might be both. I think he looks like a cheerleader. <laughs> yeah. he the Jazz also started preseason last night and beat the uh, Portland Trailblazers. Oh, oh, good okay. for them. <laughs> Thanks, them. Dave. We've still got a great story coming up for you on 11 News at Noon. Blood Moon, early rising Utahns may have caught a rare glimpse this morning of a total lunar eclipse. We'll be right back. Some lucky Utahns got to see the moon dip into the Earth's shadow early this morning. This is a view of the lunar eclipse from the White House. Experts say most of North and South America could see it, and it was 5% larger than the last eclipse in April. It's part of a blood moon series, meaning the moon turns bright orange, blood red, dark brown, and then a rare dark gray. The next lunar eclipse will be in April. Now, Shayla, didn't you see that this morning? You know what? I woke up at 4.30 this morning <laughs> to go see it, and I did not get that view that they got in D.C. <laughs> Let me just, there was a cloud, like, out of all the places in the sky, there was a cloud oh, over no. the moon. So I couldn't even see it that well. Darn it. Yes, well, yes. you can go, try again in April. <laughs> <laughs> at least President Obama and all the congressmen and senators got to see it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess. Look, Except look. some of them are here campaigning. Yeah. That's true, yeah. So, we just so. watched one of those debates. <laughs> <laughs> all those lucky people in Washington, D.C. Some people have all the luck. Yeah. They no do. kidding. That's your 11 News at Noon for Wednesday, October 8th. For more information on our stories or to share with your friends, check out our website at 11news.byu.edu. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day.